Hello and welcome to Panzer Court. Today we will talk about prototypes. In the core game, you can get prototype units in several different ways. Ways. The most obvious one is industry connections. This gives you 15 to 20 random strength points of one single prototype unit. Every mission except the first and by random it means that it looks forward <clears throat> six months into the future from the scenario start date and checks if any new equipment becomes available and then it randomly picks one of those units and gives you either 15 or 20 strength points and this repeats with every scenario and you keep those, even if you don't upgrade, if you don't use them up, you keep those uh, prototypes for later missions uh, as well. So if you get, uh, say, a strategic bomber early and then you get it early again, the next uh, mission, you could have 15 plus 20 or 35 strength points. Sometimes the prototypes you get are very useful. Other times they are not useful at all because you're not going to use that unit type anyway or well it, it it depends sometimes you get lucky and get the tiger six months uh, early so i would not uh, say that this is one of the best tricks but it can be enjoyable so next step let's look at some of the scenarios where you get the scripted uh, prototypes the first place you get uh, a prototype is after Norway and you can get the same prototype by selecting Belgium or Sedan so there is no difference uh, there so if you go to B and we go to artillery we can see that you receive 20 strength points of Stug 3B this is the first Stug model and it was intended to accompany the infantry on their offense to take out enemy machine gun nests and pillboxes and that sort of thing. And it was very successful in that role having machine guns, pretty heavy armor for a, a <coughs> German armored vehicle at this time and a short barreled 75 millimeter howitzer. So it would drive up clo real close and put a few rounds into the target. So, stat-wise, it has, well, it's not amazing. I mean, it's, its gun is no bigger than this, and it has range 1. But at 16 hard defense in 1940, it can pretty much drive up to infantry and be immune to, to damage. And it has artillery support or soft support. It has suppressing fire, so most of the stuff it does is suppression, 90% suppression, 10% kills. It gains a little bonus against structures. It's not a huge bonus. Uh, there aren't that many structures, but okay. And if you really want to kill entrenchment, this is actually the best, cheapest unit in the game. It's just two slots. So you can put it at overstrength 11 for free, basically. So I... Uh, I usually take one just because the cost is so low 200 prestige and two two slots uh, for a little artillery that can be used to help clear cities or support your infantry this one backed by an anti-tank gun will also deter most armored attacks so uh, it has freedom of movement the next prototypes scripted prototypes you get uh, you get in uh, at the start of uh, Barbarossa and you get a uh, different pick for each of the three starting points. If you go Barbarossa now, north, you can go to anti-tank and you see Max, the anti-tank gun prototype. And if you compare him to the Panzerjager, the difference is uh, very large. 24 hard attack is massive at this point in the game and 16 uh, <coughs> hard defense that's to three level and uh, it even compares well to the five centimeter pack but of course max is uh, self-propelled 
has way better defense. Uh, Max even has uh, <clears throat> close defense, which is pretty much unprecedented for uh, armored vehicles at this point in the game. And you get uh, 20 points, is four slots, so I mean, it's unlikely that you will uh, over strengthen him much, possibly to 13, but uh, I have uh, typically run mine at the base level. That means you have strength, 10 strength points left, so you could take a, a hit or two on, on max and uh, <clears throat> and still be able to repair in between scenarios. I, I've played with max all the way up to the end of the, well, again, not the end of the campaign, but until you get the really strong anti-tank guns uh, later on. So the only thing that can really hurt max is uh, airstrikes. Uh, so just keep him protected from that, and you should be good. If you go Barbarossa Center, however, <coughs> you will get no anti-tank unit, but you will get an artillery unit. <coughs> Sorry, that's called Carl. This is a siege mortar. It saw very little use in World War II. Uh, its moment of fame was in Sevastopol, where it uh, took out uh, like one of the Maxim Gorky batteries turrets and it was inoperable for like one day and when the Russians got it back into operation they could only fire one of the barrels so that battery still had three or four barrels and the other Maxim Gorky battery still had all its uh, so its uh, its usefulness was questionable at uh, at best, it saw some use in other certain settings, but its biggest problem was a lack of ammunition, and of course, it was a monster to transport and set up. Its range wasn't that great either, so uh, it had to be well protected from counter battery fire, typically by digging it up. So, it was another weapon, I think, that uh, had very little impact on the war. It certainly didn't. Uh, do much uh, at Sevastopol. So why would you want to take this? It's because it is completely uh, historical. Um, it has uh, no bearing on the capabilities of this weapon in the war. They have created a uh, single entity, so you have to kill all the strength points before it uh, shoots with reduced efficiency. It has entrenchment killer times four. <clears throat> that I can possibly understand. This I cannot understand. If you bomb or shoot this up with uh, planes or ground units, it certainly would be less effective. It ignores entrenchment. Okay, also acceptable. It cannot be purchased, upgraded, or replaced. I'm okay with that too. And it does not entrench. But it's, it's the lack of one trait. And you guessed it. It does not have, to have suppressing fire. So, given that it has so high soft attack and hard attack and single entity, it will attack with its full 10 strength uh, every time until the end of the campaign, unless you do something incredibly stupid. Just park a recon plane on top of it, and it will be safe throughout the game. And it will. Well, some late war tanks could have more than 24 ground defense, I suppose, but basically every strength point that hits, so your accuracy is important, but if you can get accuracy to 90 through 5 stars, it's pretty easy because you are doing a lot of kills and also use a recon, 10 out of 10 um, shots will be a hit and they will be an insta kill. So a fully maxed out Carl with uh, with um, a recon bonus could easily uh, do 10 damage to to stuff. And this does not apply only to static uh, targets. It works equally well against tanks or infantry or any other thing. And uh, of course it has speed 3, that's not super fast, but it can be rail transported. And it has range 3, it's also not super strong, but look at the ground defense and air defense. It's through the roof. So even if you manage to air raid Carl, there's very little chance it will be 
damaged and even large tanks without problems just wiping Carl out. So the designers have created a completely preposterous uh, uh, unit that uh, exists in a insane dream realm somewhere. So if you like to take what is good, I would always recommend going Barbarossa Center to buy Carl. And I mean, seven spots is a lot. 3,000 you can easily afford if you played through from 1939, so that's not a problem. So if there are scenarios where you don't need Carl, you can put him in to the reserve. And of course, yes, you cannot purchase, upgrade, or replace him, uh, but you can put heroes on him. And of course, Carl with, say, double shot or some form of rapid fire is also quite fun. So that's Carl for you. Completely OP and just super stupid. I argued very hard in the beta to at least give them the suppression trait, but uh, apparently, since it was a limited asset, uh, it was not a problem. But it is a problem. It just wipes out everything it shoots at, uh, and it's just dumb, silly mode all the way. So if you go Barbarossa South, you have another anti-tank gun. It's not Max this time, it's Emil. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> looking at uh, the stats, you can see that uh, Emil is uh, slightly better, I think, than uh, Max, not uh, by a whole lot, but uh, a little. And uh, he also costs one slot more. So if you absolutely want a very good uh, anti-tank prototype, you can go Barbarossa South. Otherwise, you could go uh, Barbarossa North. Uh, but uh, of course, if you want uh, the unit with the most firepower, uh, you go Barbarossa Center. There's no question about it. So the next prototype you get in uh, in Barbarossa is uh, in uh, June 42, breaking this through at Sevastopol. Uh, here you get the Gust Gustav railgun, and uh, you can see that uh, there is a Gustav here. Uh, it doesn't have a little hash mark here, so that's that's an auxiliary unit. So you start with Gustav. But to make it even more fun, you can buy your own Gustav. These are prototypes from uh, my uh, industrial connections trait. So you get Gustav and you also get 40 strength points of these Goliath bombs. But they self-destruct when they attack, so that's a limited uh, asset. Uh, you can see they have 31 uh, hard attacks. They can do decent damage against enemy tanks and especially uh, fortification because they are pretty slow and you can see ignores entrenchment cannot be split kamikaze so it is destroyed cannot be managed and it can also clear minefields so you might want to play around with them it's just a hundred but they are four spots so you start with four, I think, in this scenario, and I've never felt the urge to actually buy them. So, curiously, in this scenario, you no, you have two. You know, you start with two there and two there. Yeah. So, curiously, in this scenario, you get the option to buy exactly the same prototypes as you start with. But Goliath, not interesting. And you can just look at the stats. It has 80 soft attack. That is, of course, completely uh, nonsense because uh, if you have 12 more than the defender's defense, you will always do a kill on a shot that's a hit. So that's just bragging. Uh, but hard attack is way through the roof, and there, I don't think there are anything with more than 36 ground defense. Well, maybe some of the heavy forts around Sevastopol, by the way. And it has exactly the same stats as uh, uh, 
um, point. It is single entity entrenchment killer <coughs> and it lacks suppressing fire. So this is of course incredibly good because it has six range. Yes, it is limited by moving along rail lines, but with 10 movement and six range, you can basically hit whatever it is you want to hit, uh, or at least uh, targets that lie close to major objective because they're almost always connected by rail lines. So here the designer have figured out it's a great idea to add yet another gun that completely breaks the basic premises of the of the game by introducing this speed 10 range 6 thing and you can imagine what this is like with double shot or rapid fire and uh, no suppressing fire so everything every hit is lethal and this was also used uh, it had amazing range and it was used uh, to some effect but it took forever to move and uh, and set up uh, uh, firing positions but yet this guy can sit back and forth along the rail lines and shoot uh, like uh, crazy i also voted to have suppressing fire on this uh, guy i figured that entrenchment killing and uh, being able to do at least some kills but also a lot of suppression would be good enough uh, but the designers wanted this monster running around so in this scenario in sevastopol you can buy your own gustav it's a bit pricey but you should have enough uh, so you can have two gustavs and one carl from barbarossa center and then this is no no longer a, a real scenario you just point uh, your two Gustavs uh, first at uh, the most Maxim Gorky fort because it is uh, heavy and has range uh, uh, five and just blow it up uh, before you move forward and you can just clean up everything using those big guns you can see rail lines going down here Carl isn't fast but he wipes out stuff um, so if you really want to, you can buy Sevastopol, have both Carl and your own uh, Gustav. This Gustav you cannot bring, but you can bring the one you bought yourself. And when you get to places like Stalingrad, they of course make it so much easier. So much easier if this stupid, silly, easy mode. Unfortunately, I don't want to uh, speak badly about the game, but like all games, there are some good design choices and some bad ones. And Carl Gustav are incredibly bad design choices uh, because they break some basic premises of the game. And that is how does artillery work. And these guns were no more effective than other artillery. And they were even less mobile, but this game makes them super weapons and makes them super mobile, so I don't get it. But okay. How much more reasonable prototype can be found here? This is the Middle East scenario, so part the non-historical path uh, for the Africa Corps. And here you can find it under tank. And here you find 20 strength points of Tiger C. So you can have a slightly lower strength of the tiger and in Middle East and Persia and also in uh, the Caucasus, you can uh, enjoy this prototype. And when you get to 43, you can have your own non-prototype tigers, of course. So 20 strength points should be enough to have some uh, fun. This is just fun and uh, unreasonable, like the Stug uh, 3B. Um, yeah so uh, i like this one and i think that's uh, about as far as we can get i don't remember seeing any more um, default uh, or scripted uh, scripted uh, prototypes uh -huh. if you know about any i missed feel free to uh, let me know it's also possible to just open a scenario in the editor, go to scenario parameters, players, and then look here, prototypes, pool, that this will tell you if there are any prototypes for that side. So 
if it said uh, mouse uh, 20 here you would have 20 mouse points uh, in your pool but this is curse can you get nothing special there no so that's all about prototypes goodbye